Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 135. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation, you love great audio content, and because of this, Audible is offering Entrepreneur on Fire listeners a free audiobook and 30-day membership. I recommend The Icarus Deception by Seth Godin. He narrates the entire book himself, and it is incredible. Jump on this limited-time offer at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. And now let's give it up for our sponsor, Chris Smith. Their founder spent 18 months developing and bringing to market the perfect milkshake protein supplements. From the seven different proteins they source to the four-hour muscle recovery they support, the Perfect Foods company figured out how to get the healthy part to play nice with the amazing taste part. Visit them at theperfectfoodsco.com. That's theperfectfoodsco.com. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Noah St. John. Noah, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely, John. Rock and roll. (laughs) All right. I love it. (laughs) Noah is a success expert, best-selling author, and the inventor of affirmations. Noah is one of the world's most sought-after experts on personal growth and professional development. Given Fire Nation a little overview, Noah, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about you personally, we want to get to know you. And then take another minute and tell us about your business. Well, uh, thanks, John. I'm really excited to be here. Um, my main business is uh, called Success Clinic International. You can find us online at noahstjohn.com. That's just like it sounds, N-O-A-H-S-T-J-O-H-N.com. So we have both books, the New Testament and the Old Testament covered, just in case. <laughs> That's where we're at. <laughs> Took me a second, but I definitely yeah, I, got I it. I was waiting. I'm like, come on, John, you can do it. He did it. All right. All right. Anyways, so... Um, Yeah, so what I do is I help entrepreneurs uh, make more money and take more time off by really aligning their inner game and their outer game of success. So it really is a lot about, um, you know, the inner workings, that inner game, as well as the outer game. So that's what we do. And just tell us a little bit about you personally. Well, I'm uh, very happily married. I have a gorgeous, beautiful wife, um, and uh, we have three kids. Uh, We live in Ohio. And um, it's just a, a beautiful place to live here. And um, I enjoy ballroom dancing and uh, walking on the beach at sunset. What about Gooch's Beach and Kenny Bunk? <laughs> exactly. Well, John, John, uh, as you know, you and I were just talking about the fact that I grew up in Kenny Bunk, Port, Maine, and you're there in Portland. I used to take classes there all the time. I think I'm your first guest that's ever grew up in Maine. Well, no, obviously we could talk about Maine all day, but... Mm. We're going to have to delve into the next topic, which is the success quote, because we like to get the motivational ball rolling here at Entrepreneur on Fire. And I know you have a great quote for us, so go ahead, kick it off. Well, my favorite success quote, John, it comes from Ben Franklin. And the story goes like this. One day, a young man went up to Ben Franklin and asked him what was the best investment that he could make. Now, he was expecting Ben to say stocks, bonds, or you know whatever they had back then. It was pretty much the same thing. And, and, but Ben surprised him, and he said this. You, for the best return on your investment, pour your purse into your head. Because that way, uh, and that's, so that's a quote, pour your purse into your head. And the, uh, you know, to expound on that, the point is that way no one can ever take it away from you. No one can ever take away your investment when you pour in your head. Now, by the way, I have a modern turn on that phrase. Uh, so Ben said, pour your purse into your head. My modern version goes like this, fix your head to fill your purse. Yes. And the reason I say that is because, as I mentioned a moment ago, you know, we work with uh, entrepreneurs in their inner game and outer game. Well, just doing that, um, since just since 2007, working on you know, entrepreneurs' inner game and outer game, my clients and I have been able to add over $52 million in new revenues. Wow. Just since 2007. And I'll be honest with you guys, 80% of that is inner game stuff. You know, you can talk about sales marketing and, and customers and all that stuff, which is, of course, hugely important. And there's no discounting that. However, 
I would argue that if you don't focus on the inner game at least as much, if not more than the outer game, you're really leaving a lot of money on the table. Could not agree more. And Noah, this is a spotlight of you, of your journey. So take us down to the ground level. How have you actually applied this quote to your life, to your entrepreneurial journey? Well, I'm a lifelong student, John. I love, I, I just love learning, and I know everybody listening to your show is like me, and you know we just enjoy learning. So, you know, I've become a lifelong student as a you know success expert, a business expert, a productivity expert. Um, I'm often called the abundant lifestyle authority because that's what I help entrepreneurs with. Is literally, you know, stop having a business that you're a slave to and instead have a business that you own instead of one that owns you. So it's really about investing in your own education um, to become a lifelong student, to study and surround yourself with the right people. So really, that's how I've applied it. And that's how I encourage you know, our, our coaching clients and mastermind students to apply it. Mm, thank you for expounding there. And we're definitely going to use that to lead into our next topic, Noah, which is failure or challenges or obstacles that as entrepreneurs we face throughout our journey. Our journeys are riddled with these three things and we need to embrace them and use them to move forward, to improve upon, to learn from. Take us back to a time, Noah, when you failed or when you just came up against an obstacle or challenge that you really had to dig deep and then share with us how you overcame that. Well, actually, back in 2006, I found myself um, buried in tens of thousands of dollars of credit card debt. And I was in a bad relationship, um, and that was, you know, the woman that I was with was also my business partner, um, and I made a lot of very poor decisions. I didn't trust myself. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't listen to my instincts. I knew everything was wrong, but I just said, oh, I'm sure they're smarter than I am, so okay, I'll go along with what they say. And that was the wrong thing to do, so I ended up um, literally tens of thousands of dollars in debt, and I had to um, go back and move in to my parents' basement. Uh, so try that one on for size, being a success coach and a success author, and you're working out of your parents' basement. So what I realized at that time, John, I mean, it was very, I of course, was very depressed and upset and angry and embarrassed and yeah. humiliated. And I just said, I realized that I have to that I had made those choices, that I had not listened to myself, that I was coming from fear. I was coming from lack. I was coming from not believing in myself. And I said, I've got to just draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know what I'm going to do even. But I said, if I created this lousy situation, that means I can create something different. So I just went back. I started studying. I did a lot of meditating, a lot of inner work. Long story short, in the next 24 months, I actually landed a six-figure book deal with one of the world's largest publishers. I became a best-selling author for the first time. I met my wife, my now awesome, gorgeous, incredible wife, uh, moved here to Ohio, bought a beautiful home here in the Midwest, and started having these incredible results with clients that I just shared with you. So it was really an incredible turnaround, and really it came from what I just said, which is absolutely, no matter what, drawing that line in the sand and saying, I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to surround myself with people who believe in me. And I didn't know anybody at that time. And I just, I just made a decision. And I think that's what, what a lot of entrepreneurs are, are waiting for the time to be perfect, everything to be perfect. It's never, ever, ever going to be perfect. And you just have to go. The analogy I often use with my, my clients, John, is it's like they want to drive from New York to Los Angeles, but they're waiting for all the lights to be green on the whole way before they'll leave the driveway. Never going to happen. And it will never, ever happen. And so I, you know, I, I have to just kind of pound this into people's heads, really. I mean, because I had to learn it myself and say, okay, it's never going to be perfect. Let's just go. Just put one foot in front of the other and just, okay, today is this is what I'm going to do. And then tomorrow I'm going to do the next thing. And you just keep your head down kind of and just go, all right, we're doing this. And you got to talk to yourself sometimes and really get, get yourself moving. Well, I can tell that your energy definitely kickstarted a lot of motors. And a Chinese proverb that I go back to every now and then on this show is, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, but the second best time is today. And that just speaks so much to me as an entrepreneur, just saying, hey, 
you can't just think you missed your opportunity or that it's too late. Like you just need to start now and you just need to start making progress now. So I love this message and I want to use that to transition to our next topic, which is an aha moment. And you've already shared with us some aha moments that you've had and they are very powerful. And just the kind of energy that you have, Noah, I know that you have aha moments every day on certain levels, every week. But take us back to a time when you just had this light bulb go off and you said, wow, this is going to resonate so well with my clients, with my listeners, with my fans. And then share with us how you turned that moment into success. Absolutely. Well, it's funny that you asked me that, John, because my whole business is built on two aha moments that I had back in 1997. I'd love to hear both of them. <laughs> Absolutely. So the first one was, was you know, well, there are two seminal moments in my life. So let me take you back to 1997. I was a, at that time, I was a divorced 30 year old college student. I was uh, a religious studies major at a, a school in a college in Amherst, Massachusetts. And um, I was studying religious studies. And I was living in a dorm room that was so large that if you put your hands out to both sides, you could touch the walls on either side. <laughs> that's how that's how voluminous it was. Anyway, and I had probably eight hundred dollars to my name. So, long story short, I was kind of I was sitting there one night. It was April nineteen ninety seven, and I was looking around my my little dorm room that you could pretty much put in your pocket, and I realized there was something interesting going on. I had all these phrases or or statements that I had put up around my room, saying like I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm I'm good enough. All these statements positive statements to kind of pump myself up. Now, why had I done that? Well, because every book that I'd ever read on self-help and personal growth said, that's what you're supposed to do. So I did it. I did it over and over and over again. And my life still sucked. And I realized I didn't believe any of these things. So I, was, I went to bed that night. I was very depressed, very just kind of you know frustrated and upset. And like, gosh, I mean, what a loser. I just felt like such a schmo. So I got up the next morning, got in the shower, and I just started to think about all this. Now, do you ever have those times, and I know every entrepreneur has had these, these shower moments, I call them. You know, you're in the shower and you, you just think of that thing. It's that, the shower fairy, you know. So much so, <laughs> Noah, that I used to be a scuba diver. And so I actually took that underwater writing tablet that you can have with a little nice. lead that, that writes underwater and the thing, and it's in my shower. So when I have these moments, Brilliant. I can write them down. I love it. Well, I didn't have that, but I, I had the shower a moment. So here's so I started to think about what I had just said, which is how come I've been saying all these positive statements and I don't believe them? And I started to think about, well, what is what we're really talking about is beliefs. And then I said, well, what's a belief? Well, a belief is a thought. Well, what's a thought? I said, what is human thought? And then I started to think about it and I realized that human thought, when you boil it down, is really the process of asking and searching for answers to questions not statements. So let me give you an example. Why is the sky blue? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Now, but what happened in your brain in that moment, John? What just happened is I asked you a question and what happened in your brain? Is the ocean reflecting against the sky? Well, <laughs> what happened was you did a search in your brain. Your brain started to search for the answer, even if you don't know the answer, right? Even if we don't consciously know the answer. It's like a Google search or a computer searching its files. It's like the sky's blue because I don't know. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's searching, right? It automatically does that. So I said, wait a second. If the human mind is automatically searching for answers to questions, why are we going around making statements that we don't believe? Why don't we cut out the middleman? And I said, well, geez, what would that look like? And I said, well, let's see, you got this statement. So let's take a positive statement that we all say, like, I am rich, right? And you say, I am rich. And your brain says, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> most, for most people, most entrepreneurs, if they said something like, I am rich, their brain would go, yeah, right. No, you're not. Look at your checkbook. You don't, don't, I don't feel that rich, right? You would dollars Right. It, it would instantly start to disprove or disbelieve what you just said. So I said, well, wait a minute. If that's the statement that we're not believing, what would be the question? And then I asked myself a question. Why am I so rich? Uh, Why am I so rich? Now, I hope everybody got that and, and, and write that down and think about that. Why am I so rich? Now, when you start to ask the question, why am I so rich? What starts to happen in your brain? I start thinking of all the things that I have to be rich for. Exactly. You start to search for the answer. Now, we all know about the law of sowing and reaping. As you sow, so shall you reap, right? But what are we sowing? Well, we're sowing seeds of thought. But what are most people doing? They're sowing lousy thought seeds. Why am I so broke? Why am I so you know, fat? Why can't I lose weight? Why can't I find the right people? Why can't I get more customers? Why is there more month left at the end of the money, right? You, you ask lousy questions, and what do you get? 
Lousy answers. Right. And that means a lousy life. So I said, wait a second. What if instead of asking lousy questions that lead to lousy answers and a lousy life, what if we flip the whole thing on its head and start asking empowering questions that lead to phenomenal answers and create a wonderful life? And as I was standing there in the shower, April 1997, I said, holy cow, I think I just invented something. Wow. I just had an aha moment. Yes. And that's what happened. So what I, I said, I, did, I just invented something. So I said, I got to come up with a name for this, this process, this method, this technique that I just invented. And so I called it affirmations, not affirmations with an I, but affirmations with an O, A-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S. And I realized that just like people are sowing lousy thought seeds of negative beliefs, I can't do it, I, I'm not good enough, everybody else is smarter than me, I don't have enough money, I don't know what to do, I don't know who to talk to. You sow enough of those seeds and that's what you create. Well, now using affirmations, you can begin to immediately change your disempowering beliefs and negative thought patterns into empowering beliefs and incredibly powerful new habits to create success in your life and in your business. So, John, what I've been able to share with, you know, now since 1997, um, you know, tens of thousands of people all around the world, I mean, literally multimillionaire CEOs, stay-at-home moms, teenagers, professional athletes are all using affirmations. And that's what my, my new book is about, my new book that's, that's coming out. Uh, later this year, it's called The Book of Affirmations, Discovering the Missing Piece to Abundant Health, Wealth, Love, and Happiness. And I just want to give your, your listeners a free gift here real quick, which Great. is at affirmationsbook.com, not affirmation, but A-F-F-O-R. M-A-T-I-O-N-S, affirmationsbook.com, you can actually get $300 worth of training for free when you pre-order my new book of affirmations. It's published by Hay House, which is Hay House, I'm sure many of you are familiar with, is the largest self-help publisher in the world. So, I mean, it's just been an incredible journey. That aha moment, John, has led to almost all of the work that I've been able to do with clients just understanding how to turn those negative beliefs because let me just share something real quick. Most entrepreneurs, if you, were to, if you were to ask them and say, listen, get really honest with me here, do you really think you can achieve what you set out to achieve? I would venture to say that 70 to 80% would say, well, I want to do it, but I don't know if I can really do it. And when you don't believe that you can do something, what are your actions going to be? Pretty half-hearted or some other part of the anatomy, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's what's, because it's like, well, I mean, you already said to yourself and maybe to other people, ah, I don't know if I can do it. So what are you going to do? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of give it a try. But then why, it's full of hesitation and, and, oh, I probably can't do it. And then you don't, and let's say you don't get what you want, you know, first try. See, I told you. And that's why people give up. And there's that, you know, that famous story from Napoleon Hill, the people who gave up, they were three feet from gold three feet from gold, and they said, ah, I guess there's nothing here. Then all of a sudden, somebody else comes in and says, wait a minute, they just turned the wrong way. If we go over this way, uh, we'll find it. And he brought in experts. He brought in people who could understand. Finally, long story short, of course, he dug three feet and found this incredible vein of gold. So that's what I think so many entrepreneurs are doing, John, is they're, they're holding themselves back because of this inner game stuff that I call, the, you know, just the inner game, the beliefs that, oh, I can't do it. Just to tell a very quick story, one of my clients came to me and he said, Noah, I, I, was, I was speaking on stage in Los Angeles and I came off the stage. This guy practically tackled me. He says, Noah, I want you to coach me. And I said, okay, what's your story? He says, I'm totally stuck. I'm only making four million dollars a year and I went <laughs> I had the same reaction I said well gee you know a lot of people like to be stuck at four million a year he goes, and here no. are my rates <laughs> yeah right exactly and he goes no no no, you don't understand I, I, I own a software company we got to four million really fast you know we got to four million revenues like overnight and but we've been plateaued for the last four years and as soon as I heard you talk about the inner game and, and you know, the affirmations, everything you say, Noah, I see, he says, I knew you were the person I've been looking for. Bottom line, I coached him. We worked together for you know, a, a, about nine months. That year, just word, using these techniques, he went from uh, $4 million over the last four, you know, four years stuck at $4 million, he went to $20 million in revenues in one year. That's a six times increase. Wow. And, I will be completely honest with you guys. 90% of the work we did was inner game. Inner game. We, we didn't talk about, you know, like I said, customer service, marketing. Of course, that's all important. But what was holding him back was inner game, 
four million to twenty million. Anybody interested? I mean, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, have you had an "I've made a moment"? Well, yeah, I, I've actually had a few, uh, and and really, it was um, you know, one was getting out of my parents' basement. I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> you yeah. know, get, getting rid of all that head—I call it head trash—just that head trash that's keeping so many people back. Um, was as I mentioned, you know, I. I, I 24 months, less than 24 months actually, after that really awful, my lowest point, I got a six-figure book deal from one of the world's largest publishers Wow! talking about this very thing. And this year, as I mentioned, my new book coming from Hay House, um, I mean, I've just been such a huge admirer of Hay House and everything they've been doing and able to do for, so, I mean, literally tens of millions of people around the world. And so just to be such a, a big fan of them and now one of their authors is just an incredible honor. I mean, you have so many exciting things going on, Noah, right now. If you could just pull out one thing that we haven't talked about that you would just love to kind of delve into and share with Fire Nation, what would that be? It really would be working with my alliance members. That's that's our, our private mastermind and mentorship group. Um, we call it the Accelerated Wealth Alliance because that's what I do. I help people accelerate their wealth, you know, literally get their foot off the brake. And that's what that's the analogy that we use, John, is, is so many entrepreneurs are driving down the road of life with one foot on the brake. And just like this, uh, you know, this entrepreneur, this client I just talked about, I mean, he, he got it when I was saying, you know, that you have your foot on the brake. And he's like, exactly. I've been hiring all these people and consultants and whatever, and they're trying to get me to go push myself harder. It's not always about pushing yourself harder. It's about getting your foot off the brake. Now, obviously, we don't do this on purpose. These are all subconscious things that we're doing. But let's be honest, so many of us grew up in, in, a, in lack and in fear and, you know, yeah. it's not... It's not okay to make a lot of money. That's a huge just belief that's out there. You shouldn't make a lot of money. And I mean, look how people, uh, you know, who make lots of money are, are quote unquote looked down on or, or, or made fun of or, or, you know, vilified in the movies, et cetera. So there's tons of head trash around that. Just, you know, being a person who is wealthy. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but it's true. So anyway, just working with my alliance members, helping them with their inner game, with their outer game, um, you know, literally. And so you see people just taking off, getting to spend more time with their families, helping more people, making more money, you know, more time off, enjoying their business again, and really just not being owned by the business, but having a business that you own. Wow, that is just powerful stuff, Noah. And it just makes me really excited to move into this next round with all this energy that we have built up right now. And that is the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions. And you can back at us Fire Nation with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Does that sound like a plan? Ready to go. <laughs> what was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Not knowing who to trust. That mm. was the number one thing for me and, nice. and learning who I could trust. What is the best business advice that you ever received? One of my, my dear friends, John Asaraf, uh, told me, and he actually wrote the foreword for uh, the new book of Affirmations, which is such an honor. Uh, John said to come up with a vision first, a vision for your company and, and a vision for your life, but particularly, of course, for your company. So what is the vision? So our vision uh, at Success Clinic is to teach 20 million people to use Affirmations by the year 2020. So 20 million by 2020, that's our, that's our vision. And then to work down, work if you want backwards, then come up with a strategy to do that and then the tactics. Where I see people, entrepreneurs making a big mistake is they're chasing their tail, trying every tactic on the internet. Oh, let's try this shiny object, this shiny object, you know, and, and look, everything works. But the point is there's no overall strategy and there's no overarching vision. So that was a really great piece of advice. Mm, that is a powerful preface. What do you regret doing or not doing at some point in your journey? And what lesson did you learn? I regret not trusting myself more. I, I know I kind of, I, I keep, I kind of sound like a broken record, but it really was, it was, it's been a long process for me to trust my gut, trust my instincts and, and know who to trust. So, you know, what I regret the most is, is really listening to the wrong people and not listening to myself for so long. Yep. Wow. Yeah. We're going to change gears a little bit here. Sure. If you could only choose two websites, Noah, to obtain all the information that you need to succeed, what would they be and why? The first would be noahstjohn.com. Can I say that? No, I can't. No, say that. you that can. Hey, 
<laughs> hey, if it has the information needed well, to succeed, then let's be honest. I mean, it, it, we've been able to help a lot of people, John, and it's just such an honor. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, we're just really honored and thrilled to be able to do that. Um, you know, as as far as a, a website, I mean, I guess, you know, of course, the obvious answer is Google because that does lead, it's the portal to everything. Everything. I, I certainly use it, you know, 100 times a day, as I'm sure we all do. So, yeah, I would have to say those two. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with Fire Nation? Yeah, uh, Google Drive, which used to be Google Docs, now Google Drive. I I love it. I mean, that has revolutionized my company because we get to share things and, and, you know, change them in real time. So I, I, my gosh, again, I use that 100 times a day or more. So I couldn't recommend it highly enough. And by the way, just real quick, they, they have a great survey tool that not a lot of people know about. There's a free survey tool and I send surveys to my list all the time. And it just, my, my gosh, you can put up a survey in 10 minutes and it's, it's super. Is it actually like the form or is there a, is yes. it, okay, form. it's the form. Yes. And you, and you can, you can analyze it. I mean, I'm, a, I'm just such a geek. I love graphs and charts and pie charts and everything. And you can just, you know, if you get, you know, a thousand responses, it'll say 41% said this and 22%. It's like, ah, I'm, I'm in geek heaven. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. And they just keep getting better every single day. Yeah. If you could recommend a book for Fire Nation, besides the Noah St. John, which will be linked up in the show notes, Affirmations, what would you recommend? I would recommend uh, a book by my good friend, Jay Niblick, uh, which is N-I-B-L-I-C-K, and it's called What's Your Genius? And what uh, the subtitle is How the Best Think for Success in the New Economy. And what Jay is really brilliant at is uh, really helping people understand what their inner genius is. And um, you know that book really helped me a lot. So What's Your Genius by Jay Niblick. Beautiful. So Noah, this is the last question, but it's my favorite. It's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, and come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Oh, that's great. I love that oh, question. It's amazing. All right. So the first thing I would do is buy my name, you, you know, my name URL. So in my case, NoahStJohn.com. I would definitely buy that. Now, if you're if you have an, a common name like you know Bob Anderson, you might have to get the Bob Anderson or the real Bob Anderson or whatever. But whatever whatever you can do, you got to have your name. I don't. And and of course, you have to have the name of your business too. But in this day and age, John, you know, as you know, we are all experts. We're all thought leaders, or at least need to position ourselves as such. So that's the first thing I would do. Then the second thing is I would figure out who I want to serve. Yeah. In other words, who is my target market? Is it dentists, chiropractors? Is it uh, home-based entrepreneurs? Is it you know tennis players? Whatever it is. So figure out who I want to serve and then really look at that market, do my research and see where their needs are and what the holes are, what's missing. How are they being underserved? Um, and uh, as a parenthetical thing, I would say, just make sure that they can afford you, <laughs> you know, make sure that they can <laughs> afford what you're, whatever it is you're selling, uh, that they, you know, have a little budget there. And then really uh, the final step I would do is uh, figure out how I can serve them. What, what products, what services, what programs can I put together? Um, and, and yes, how, how can I make a profit at that? I, I know that sounds so obvious in kindergarten, but you would be shocked at, at how many entrepreneurs feel guilty about that and say, oh my gosh, really? Can I really make a profit? Yes, it's okay to make a profit because you're serving, you're, you're adding value. That's where money comes from is, and is value that you add to human beings. So really, I would do that and just keep doing that over and over pretty much forever. Powerful, Noah. You've just given us some great actionable advice this entire interview, and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then share with us where we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. Well, I would just say re- make sure you do whatever it takes to align your inner game and your outer game. Don't neglect one or the other. They are both essential for your success. So just align that inner game and outer game. That's, it's changed my life, and there's no question it will change anyone's life who does it. Um, so, and then you said, where do we go? So my, my two main websites, noahstjohn.com, that's again, the name, noahstjohn.com and affirmationsbook.com. Um, definitely, uh, make sure to take advantage of that $300 in free training when you get a pre-release 
Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, when you pre-order a copy of the Book of Affirmations by Hay House, um, it's an incredible book. There are amazing success stories, and they're literally some stories that you you got to read to believe. They're all true stories, all unsolicited stories. I mean, I just get people writing to us from around the world saying, you know, I I, I lost weight, I found my girlfriend, I found my soulmate, I you know doubled my income, went from penniless to six figures. I mean, this just happens over and over again when people learn how to line their inner and outer game. Great, no. This will all be linked up in the show notes, entrepreneuronfire.com. Thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. Fire Nation, what great idea do you have brewing inside you? Enough brewing. Take powerful action today. Go grab your domain and get your website up. I've created a simple seven-minute tutorial that will walk you through acquiring your domain for free all the way to your first post. Go to eofirewebsite.com to access this great tutorial, your free domain, and much more. That's eofirewebsite.com. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.